Hello, all you beautiful and amazing people. Thank you for tuning in. Welcome to the show. If you're new to the channel, I'm your host, Hyde. This is Hide and Seek Media, where we talk about news, sports, politics, and so much more. As you can see, we're talking about R.A. the Rugged Man and his explosive, fiery debate with Tim Pool on the TimCast IRL Members Only Podcast um, on TimCast.com. Now, there are a bunch of reaction videos out there already about this specific interview. Now, I want to tell you guys from the get-go, first minute, this is not the same as those other videos that just react to what happened on the podcast. I'm going to talk about, I'm going to dive a little deeper into what we learned from this interview. Not only about R.A. the Rugged Man, but about the far left and their ideology, right? We're going to dive deep into what was going on between the lines in this interview, if you will. Okay. So anyways, this is going to be my interpretation of, of what I read out of this interview, what I've learned out of this interview, what I read from how R.A. the Rugged Man composed himself on the show and what he said and how he acted towards Tim particularly. So we're going to get into all of that and a whole lot more. But before we do, do you guys think R.A. the Rugged Man was out of line for the way he treated Tim? Do you think Tim was out of line for the way he treated R.A. the Rugged Man? Let me know in the comments section down below. And I'm going to let you guys know what I think about both of those questions later on. So make sure to stay tuned all the way to the end. And we're going to get into all of that and much more. But before we do, remember guys, you can always support the channel by donating to one of my many crypto wallets in the description below, clicking the merch link and picking you out one of these funny political t-shirts like these right here. Or you can head over to Locals and become a premium member. With your subscription of just $2.99 a month, you'll get access to premium content that I upload only to locals. It won't be found on Rumble. It won't be found on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, nowhere else but locals. So if you want to get access to all of my content, click the link, head over to locals, and become a member. Now, let's get to the TimCast IRL members only podcast segment with R.A. the Rugged Man and dive deep into what we're about, what I learned from this interview. So, like the uh, swastika came from the Asian thing. Yeah, the Hindu no, 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 no. wheel so of life. In, um, in, you know, the early 1900s in Europe, you had two rising factions, the communists and the fascists. Yeah, no, this isn't what black power came from, though. It is. No, it isn't. The, the like the they symbol. Did with the, the, the same fist, thing they the did fist. with Chris, Chris, critical race theory. They did the same thing. Where bro, bro, they bro, bro, said, bro. That comes from, you know, the It's communists. called the red salute. Yeah, yeah. So, in, so what it they would do is... It stands for something completely different. But let me, let me, let me yeah. show you something. So, you know the Nazis have the, have the Nazi salute, where yeah. they do the arm up. I'm not going to do it. This is called the red salute. Mm -hmm. And it symbolizes the fingers together are strong. So there was raising your fist at someone as a threat, mm -hmm. but the symbol of the fist raised with fingers out was together we are strong. Mm -hmm. It originated as the red salute, and it's used by communist parties across the world today. Mm -hmm. It is also for the exact same reason. I'm not saying it, 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 I'm not saying the fist represents communism. It, it typically re represents revolution, but it's the same symbol. Okay, same symbol. Yeah, yeah. I, I the, thought the you hand together, I, I the fingers together. I thought you doing the thing again where you take away from you know. Black power by saying it's a part of communism. Blah, 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 and all well, that the stuff. official Black Lives Matter organization is a cultural mar Marxist organization that talks about destroying the family unit. That talks about a lot of communistic who, principles. Who, who, the, the lady yeah, like the official no, 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 the official Black Lives Matter website. Yeah, who, they have the, they have their who, own who kind runs of it? who runs it. Um, a, her, a number. Her of name people. is Doctor or something. She's a black woman. Yeah, people. Oh, but they have so different chapters all over the United States. But this is the main website. This is the main organization that is getting a lot of institutional support. You know, a they lot supported of Jesse Smollett. Yeah, yeah. I know Even that. after I know. that, you guys think, but I know that. And um, <laughs> um, uh, yeah, they all did. They, you know, they, 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 here, look, look. The, the the red salute is you know the red salute. Yeah, it, it was. I, uh, I, I got you, but that, what does that have to do with the late '60s and '70s? You know, it, it was a different movement. It had nothing. To they. Do with I'll put it this way: 
the if you're gonna if you're gonna look at a group of people doing the Nazi salute. Uh, and that's not the same thing. If, if if you see a black man doing this, you know the the Olympics, all of that stuff, uh, doing the same thing that that Lenin yeah, did. Yeah, but it doesn't stand for that. It, it sucks that it doesn't a stand symbol for that. It stands for the power of black people. It's a black fist. Like, it's not. It's not a. It's not a white Russian fist. It's a black like, fist. What sucks is when together yeah, we're strong. It's like this symbol <coughs> becomes so, so, hijacked by yeah. an evil corporation yeah, like the Italian like fashion system that I don't like Similar with the, with the swastika it got it got ob, ob, it's, it's weird taken it's by weird. the Nazis and twisted right, it's right, not hold on, hold on. it's weird to me because you, you're saying exactly what the the, the, the far right alt right people say what what so when they when they do the Roman salute, which is the history of the Nazi salute, they say it's a no, different. No, see country. now you're equating the black power fist to Nazism and no, the alt right. Yes, you are. I'm saying you. You say you. No, you're a white dude. No, what does, what does it have to do with black power? I don't know. You just brought I didn't bring up, that up. We, you said you know what the black power fist has to do with it has to do with the symbol the, where it the originates that, from. That, that, that. And, and, and so I'm, now I'm asking I'm you a question. A black fist saying black power. That's what it was. It wasn't. And what's the difference between the Roman fist saying white power? Okay, you want to go there? Yeah, Black yeah, yeah. power and white power are two very different things. Uh, 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 I don't disagree with you. Yeah, of course. Uh, my, my, my point is, the Roman, white, the Nazi salute was not, uh, it became the white power salute because of what the Nazis, Nazis represent. And what does that have to do with the Black Power Fist, man? So the Black Power Come Fist... It's, that's just extra ways to discredit the Black Power movement, man. That's all. Okay. So, what this guy doesn't understand from what Tim is trying to tell him is that they're the same. Okay. And not in the, that they're the same, you know, symbol or whatever, but that they were derived the same way. Okay. Right. They were hijacked the same way, if you will, or um, utilized the same way. The Nazis took the Roman salute, right. Whatever, you know, and then turned it into their white power salute. And then the, but what Tim is saying is that black, the Black Panthers, Black Lives Matter and Antifa and all these other people have taken the communist salute and have turned it into their salute. So, but it derived from that is what he's trying to say, but he, he doesn't seem to get that. And then he, he, he tells people they need to get educated. Like, I mean, this guy is, yeah, you know, we'll, we'll get into RA here in a minute. I just wanted to play this one little bit. The Roman, the Nazi salute was not, uh, it became the white power salute because of what the Nazis, Nazis represent. And what does that have to do with the black power fist, man? So the black power uh, fist. It's, that's just extra ways to discredit the black power movement, man. That's all it is. That's all it is. That's the thing I don't like that you do. It's like if when you see a picture uh, of. Uh, uh, I wouldn't like if somebody was flying swastikas or communist. Oh, nobody in America thinks, sees this and thinks, oh, that's from that. No, they think black power. That's what it is. They don't. Well, then they're an idiot. No, that's that's you your know? world, bro. That's the you world. Can't, you can't that's assume people think the same thing as you. We don't know the same thing. Okay, then it's an uneducated are. person. If they, you don't know that the black power fist is black power, then you're uneducated. Okay, so you need to educate yourself. You want division and hate, you'll get it. <laughs> that's what you preach. No, 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 that's what you preach right now. That's what right you now. preach. I asked you to be empathetic, and you said no. Yeah, you said you, empathetic to who? Someone said my life was a struggle is, and I had it is, bad, and you said I don't give a shit. When was that? We talking about Someone that? said. Talking about earlier in the thing. They said my I've I've, I've gone through struggles. Uh, my life so was wait, bad. Wait, my my parents so now barely this is got off by. Of black power. We're talking about see every. You don't do care is, about other people, bro. We do. Oh no, I'm, no, no, I'm the no, guy no. who actually did the documentary on on blockbusting and redlining and talks about this shit. Yeah, okay, you don't. Okay. You only focus on your. I'm the guy that made thirty years of music that that helped. People. But you don't so, care so about other your people. You don't care about these people. You don't you know? care about them. Yeah. You told them basically to fuck themselves. Oh, somebody made a comment when we were talking about black. Saying my life struggled. And you said, I don't give a fuck. Yeah, I said, I don't give a fuck. You, I'm a, you I'm, couldn't I'm say that. You, you couldn't fuck. say that. You, I know. You, you said, I don't care. I don't care. I'm not going to give I a I made a episode. joke. I thought you were clear. You're the one like, that says you like uh, uh, Dave Chappelle. You like this guy. You like Dave Colin. Great. Okay, so so why don't you care that he hurts people's feelings? He says, fuck you to everybody. Why that's don't right. you care about him? That, that's a good thing. So you just got mad at me making a joke about a comment because it didn't fit your agenda? Right now. But, but right you, now, you defend comedians I'm asking you, talking all trash. I asked you, I said, why don't you approach this person with empathy? And you said, no, that wasn't a joke. You're hypocritical. Yeah, of course it was. Of course it was. You said, no, 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 Of course it was. We were having a conversation. She said, how is that a joke? My white, my white, my Yeah, how's that a joke? She said, I'm white and my mom had to work two to three jobs to bring us up and we had a very difficult upbringing. Okay, so the comment from Dave Chappelle. Very, very kindly. Okay, what about the comments Dave Chappelle made on his last thing? 
Did they hurt people? Which which comments? You know, the ones that was the big, uh, everyone was making a big deal. About his trans You know what he said? Yeah. You know what he, he said? What he said? What's the thing he said? Team. Uh, I didn't see it, actually. He, he said, said, I respect the community. What he said, team, though. Mm-hmm. I'm team. What did Dave Chappelle say? I don't remember. It, um, it, it, was, it, was a, it was a term meaning that your team. Uh, uh, turf. turf. Team Turf. Team Turf. Which yeah. is very. Uh, offensive to people all over the world, right? But you know what he also so said? I defend. He said he he loves and respects the community, and he'll stop doing the jokes because they don't understand what he's trying to do. Well, he did three shows with it, and then he came out. He came out later on. Came, sa- so you think he should have? So that, then there you go. So you think comedians should apologize? So why no. are you defending them right and left? No, no, no. Listen, bro, speech. bro, bro. You, you guys trying to understand? What I'm saying is, make your jokes. That's fine. Yeah, there you go. But in the context of this person, I just said. Why don't you approach them with compassion? And you said no. Oh, yeah, because com- it was a comment in the comment section on a YouTube video. All right, all right. All right let's, and, let's, the, let's, and, the, and the girl's talking about... Let's agree to disagree We're talking about that. black folks, the struggle of... Bla- yes, we were talking about the struggle of black people. And she's like, my white family had white problems. And it was like, you know what? You know, the, 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 she didn't say white problems. She named, oh, my mom had two jobs and like, all of this people stuff. people are poor, man. Yeah, no, no. All right, no, let, me, let me ask you right now. No jokes. Well, here's the would, thing. Would you approach here, here people thing. who are see, struggling see, with compassion? See, of course, of course. That's but, all, that's but good. if those it. people are trying to take away from other people's struggles as a whole, society, um, then you go, I don't have compassion for that right now. You know, when we're talking about the black struggle and she's using her mom having two jobs to discredit the black struggle, I'm not going to have compassion me, for that at that I particular got, moment. I got, I got if, she came, if that woman came up to me and said, hey, my mom has cancer and I'm, I'm hurting, and um, I can't get a job, and my brother's on heroin. I, I would give her a hug. I would, what do you need? You need some money? What do you need? I would help her out. But if it's a comment just to, to, to downplay the struggle of black society. But she's society, not doing that, bro. So, what he's talking about, what that woman is doing, right? Like, he's accusing that woman of taking away from the black struggle, right? By talking about her struggle. But he's doing the exact same thing by not acknowledging that her struggle. He's taking away her struggle from the struggle of the poor, right? When they're where it it don't discriminate. It don't care about your color, right? Poor don't care about your color. But he don't seem to understand that. And we're gonna get into this guy. Don't oh. worry. Much love to him. I do. I do think the core of the argument between us is collectivism versus individualism. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not saying you're wrong. I'm just saying you have a different view of like how we handle things versus where we're at, you know? No, nah, it, it's, it's in the middle of that because uh, I just believe that uh, if you're on the bottom and you'll put there systematically to, to, to let people not, to take the foot off your neck, to take the knee off your neck, uh, you know, that's what I'm for. Let me, let me, let me, but, but let me to t- assume but, all groups of people are like that, I think is a little disparaging. Too. No, it's not. I think let me, nobody let me, says all people like that. He just made the case of the Haitian guy. He made the case of Candace. Oh, he made. I know, but you're making that kid. judgment every time you see. You're making that judgment every time you see color, though. Right, right. Look, look. Right? What do you mean? Well, how am I making a judgment? You're saying they're black. They're they're Therefore, someone that has a knee on them, right? Mm. Like, no, that's a collectivist, black, generalized no, statement. No, the black community does. Have a knee on its neck more than the white community in America. That's a fact. So let me let me. I want I want to explain something. That's not disparaging. That's a fact. The, 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 wanna, the black community has way more struggles, way more 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 uh, so, upon know, themselves. problems in the community. Proud upon uh, themselves. Systemic racism, which is real. No, that's and, not and, true. And the military, uh, um, the penitentiary system, and, and the militarized police, and all of that. Um, it's a different. I want to I want to explain something in a little more detail that we got. We were talking about the show that I think didn't get fleshed out enough. So, and I'll preface it by saying, I do not believe I face more discrimination okay, than black people in this country. Yeah. What I can tell you is, one of, the, one of the difficulties in my life is, people who grow up in a white suburb, everybody's white. I go there, I'm not white. I don't believe that. Well, so you're wrong, but let yeah, me explain. I don't believe that. I think somebody might, you just t- said on the last show that like, some people mistake you for Mexican. That was your biggest I'm not thing. one of them, dude. I'm like, not, this is yeah. the life I've lived. Yeah, you're I, fine. I, I, I don't, I'm not, I'm not saying that I've got a boot on my neck. You're fine. I'm saying, we're, you, we're, you, we're you need a, to understand we're in a, uh, redneck, that there are people we're in a who redneck have... redneck area. Commu- if we go up to the truck stop up the block, 
nobody's looking at you like, get that guy. You know, I didn't say they were. Yeah, but what I'm saying is if you put somebody else in there, they're looking at you funny. You're good. That ain't true. Listen, they're not looking at black guys that way. No, 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 that's bullshit. They pull you over? Yes. Because you look like what? Yes, motherfucker. What what do you look like? I get randomly flagged every fucking time I go to the airport. See, yeah, Tim got that. Because what reason? Tim got that. Fuck if I know. Because you look like what? Fuck if I know, dude. You really I got Yeah, because I get fucking every single time I go, and you are a racist dude. Dude, who says I couldn't system. possibly understand every fucking time I go to the airport? I'm randomly screened. Oh, yeah. I think it's the every penis. time, every time, yeah, yeah. every time oh. I go to the UK. They put four S's. What, is, what are you screaming for? I'm screaming because, because what? When I you're, when you're I hurt that you're a white boy. I'm hurt because you're a racist <laughs> yeah, you and you have this arrogance yeah. and elitism yeah. Yeah. that you know better than everybody. Yeah, that yeah. you're the white savior. Yeah, that you yeah, got to yeah, be yeah, in the yeah. struggle for the brown, poor brown people. No, and I, then I didn't every say fucking time. No, bro. No, no, no. Listen to what I. I say, I when I say no, no, something no, no. like, when I'm, first, polite, when, I'm first, you, low, low voice, when I'm being polite to you, lower your voice when I'm being polite to you, motherfucking human, when I'm being polite to you, and then I say, I deal with this problem, and then you laugh at me, dude. Yeah, I laugh sometimes. You're right. a racist. Yep, no, no, it's not racist. Yes, it is, dude. We're talking about systematic racism in America, and then you go, my struggle is this, to discredit the struggle of the black man and the black when woman. The, when that's the, what you, that's I literally what you do. just said, they have it worse talk, than I do. I literally just said yeah, they have I know, it worse I know, than I do. I know, I know, that was the facade. You just, you to, just, bro. That was the facade to not take away facade? from the Facade? Yes, it was like, yeah. Admitting outright, saying straight up, bro. And, and you're Jesse Smollett, Hulk. You, you, Hulk. She oh, made up please, this whole story dude. about white supremacists coming to your house and saying, oh, the mixed couple and throwing racist pamphlets at you. And you made up a whole Jesse Smollett thing. You, you, you know, you... you you know, I've been and, and that's the, that's the takeaway from the struggle of the black man. It's, it seems like we're blending between no, no. You're you're a racist prick. Here's my hour long documentary about the black struggle in Ferguson. Oh yeah, great. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh great, a hundred thousand dollar budget. Yeah. James Baldwin interviews with people on the ground to talk about what they've been through, and you have the nerve to come up to oh, me yeah, and well, tell me okay, my experiences yeah, okay. don't matter well, when I'm thing. fighting Stop the fight. Stop screaming, bitch! Stop screaming. First of all, talk like talk to me like I'm a because I'm not that guy. Yeah, you are. You are. That you actually are, dude. Yeah. You are that no, guy. I'm talking about. I'm not that guy. You're fucking screaming at, bitch. You want to get fucked up? All right. What are you fucking screaming at, bitch? Let's calm down. You, gotta gotta be man. You, you think I'm you can... I'm talking. I'm not that guy. You don't disrespect me, bitch. What did you do to me? Did you disrespect me? No, nah, you start raising your voice to me like I'm some sucker. I'm did you laugh sucker, at me? Bitch. Yeah, laugh. Did you, did you did you disrespect me? I was nice to you, bro. I was being nice. You raising your voice to me like I'm your son, bitch? You raise your voice to me? Bro, I said I, my voice I respected you. You, you wouldn't shut the I fuck appreciated up you. Raising your voice shit. I stopped when you told me to. You said talk, lower your voice, so I lowered my voice. I told you I respected you coming. It was a good show. I said I respected you, yeah. willing to admit when you got things wrong. Bro, I have put so much of my life into this. Look at this. I watch your videos. You, you, you I see already this? watched your video. No, I see your videos. You don't. You don't. No, you I see, see your videos. You yeah, you're, you're gonna say, look, this, this is the non-racist thing. But the meanwhile, you have thing. you have videos. Promoting Derek Chauvin and and acting like he he was in the right. You had you have videos of that. You have videos we of the other guy. On some you have things. videos of the other. You, you, you have videos of the other guy. Uh, two guys. Uh, Armory. Uh, um, and two you guys. Go, oh, but they grabbed the pistol, defending them, killing a black man in the streets, and he ran for them and giving excuses. Two guys. You have these videos. So all of this shit doesn't, doesn't matter. matter. Doesn't matter. No, yet. of course not. A decade of work doesn't matter. No. Because not if guys. not if no because lives were lost by police and you were there bootlicking the fucking cops. I think we should abolish the police. <laughs> but you don't. You claim that so you could get away with talking about. Have you seen my about- explosive rant where I was screaming at the camera about okay. how they're going to kick your door and lie to defend the state? Yeah, but then I see you defending cops. You're talking about two instances. Oh, there's more. There's more. I'm no, sure. No. Go. Go. To- no. 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 I said Go when to- Kim Potter shot him, I said she deserves prison for it. Okay, that's good. There you See, go. you, you look, bro. You can't look at two circumstances. My mic's not working really. Good. It, it's working, bro. Okay. We can hear you. We can hear you. Oh, you <laughs> could? We could hear you. Yeah. Right. Where there's there's, there's two one. circumstances, high profile ones, where the core of the issue is the f- a docu- a document. When I see it, I talk about it. Because there are two circumstances where I said we have questions about the individual's rights or innocence, you, you can't disregard everything that I've done. Okay, yeah. So you did a documentary that... Uh, More than one. About. Okay. We did, we did several dispatches, which were mini documentaries, about 10 minutes long. We did yeah, like but six but I watched your videos when you, you do the booger booger shit. 
What booger booger shit? Yeah, like the critical race theory th- videos where you go, oh, you know, they're gonna, d- the white boys are gonna be so offended and their kids are hurt feelings and all that but stuff. But we don't, like, we don't, we don't talk about the white people of it. We had an why Asian you talk woman on the about show. About that though, why do you, why, why are you so obsessed with critical race theory? Why is it when, so scary to you? When you people know? are are discriminated and, against and, and, on the basis no, of their but, race, I we guess, t- we yeah, say it's wrong. You know, public school, we got to be choosy about what we teach yeah. as a society. So that's we're kind of deciding what how we're going to teach little kids and I'm trying to I'm them. sitting here trying to get back get my uh, composure back right now because dude starts raising his voice talking crazy to me you know screaming to me like I'm his son or something you know Well how do you think I feel when you laugh at my struggle uh, Yeah laughing is This this is a very listen, passionate listen. this is a very passionate heated debate let's you know, try, you know, let's try you to know. focus on facts let me, no, let, but don't, I start, wanna... don't start oh I got stopped at the iPod and then pointing at my You yeah, laughed yeah, at yeah. me you like you Yeah because like, it was funny to me yeah. Exactly it, it is funny to me your struggle is funny It's so funny that, that that there's people who are racist towards me It's yeah. funny that every time they go to the airport You're not though it's not true It's like you you know this whole thing where you're trying to be this victim you created that. You're creating this victimhood. And that's I don't crazy. live in that world. You do. Go anywhere. You're safe in the fucking world, man. So, so you're creating like I have. My grandparents were Asian. There's no mom. arguing with, that, with 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 ideological racism. Yeah. <laughs> to, to me, when you look at critical race theory and the onset oh, of it, yeah. you see racial disharmony. Like race relations are pretty bad right now. I see, and, and there's a correlation on his show, though. But but I, I would I, I would say race relations overall have been deteriorating mm-hmm. ever since the onset of critical race theory, when we're meant to see each other as each, different races rather than you the have creed to look and the at character. Racism. You have to look at it, and you have to know what it you exists. won't. And you have to know it exists. And you and have you to... Oh, stop Well, there's it. like big R racism no, and small stop. R racism. Do you really I, I feel beg like you, bro. Do you really I beg in you, life bro. feel like some huge victim? I, I do you beg really you believe a, to listen to what I have to say, you really but you believe, laugh, you don't care. Yeah, because do you really believe you're some really over-the-top uh, victim of American society and they look at you like this lesser of a person? You know, Tim's you never really come believe, off like that. You can't believe that. Okay, so he's wrong because he doesn't... So apparently he doesn't really pay attention to Tim um, and and what Tim talks about because I've never heard Tim come off like I'm a victim. All right, no, Tim has been the victim of racism, but he doesn't act like a victim. He doesn't constantly blame other people for his freaking problems. Just saying, you can't. It's hard for me to fight racism when you don't believe it exists. No, I believe racism exists, but I you think don't. you try to take away from racism you, you, by, by being the victim yourself. It's, it's you, know, you know, what got me really angry is like, there's a lot of things I can say like over and over again. I think there's a lot of people in this country have way worse than I do. And every time I bring up something I went through, you just laugh and you laugh and you laugh. <laughs> you say it doesn't exist. It's not real. And then the thing, the funny thing about the airport is I literally just traveled uh, to Austin and I got randomly screened both there and back. Yeah, they yeah, pulled yeah. me out of the line. Related? Yeah, but yeah. it's just like, damn, dude. Understand. Yeah, I don't believe you're a victim. I don't. You still don't? I don't understand that you're a victim. I don't believe it. What do you think life was like for me on the south side? You think that like the white... No, 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 no. That's, where, that's where you brought it. That's so where let's, it. let's put it this way. Like, this is why I said in the beginning, my experience is... Not about the black community. Yeah, but what we were on the topic of the black community and and, and blacks being killed and stem. No, 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 no. no. That's where it or or ever will in this country. But I do experience racism. That this is the place we need to do the work. My grandfather married an Asian woman. White guy, and, and you'd look like a white guy, and you talk like doing underpaid work in the black community for tax services to try and help him. Yeah. He, ran, he ran a company with my aunt called Asset Tax, mm-hmm. and he, he told me that this is the place we need to do the work. My grandfather married an Asian woman in, in the 1930s, I think. They, they met some time so in like... How much Asian are you? Quarter. Quarter? quarter. You're not even half. Jesus. Yeah, second generation. <laughs> Come on, man. Yep. <laughs> You're quarter Asian. And, and you, you know... So what do you, what, let me ask you something. Like, how do you think it feels for me to see you laughing at me for that? For what? For being a quarter Asian. No, I'm not. No, I'm laughing because you hit it. You hit this topic so hard. Because like, of my experience. I'm Asian. I'm Asian, and they look at me crazy. And you're not. You're, you're 75 percent white guy, and, and you look like a white guy, and you talk like a white guy, and you act like a white guy. It's I like, wonder why that is. Why do you think that is? I don't know. I don't you know, think that's how they I, talk I on the South Side? Roll with. I know some people in Chicago. South Side. Um, real quick. I, I got to ask you guys a question, right? And, <clears throat> and leave your answers in the comment. And maybe, maybe I just need to be enlightened. 
right? But um, uh, Ra said that he 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 just laughed at Tim and said that he's not really Asian because he's only twenty five percent Asian and seventy five percent white. And I, I'm just curious. I'm, you know, and I don't know. Maybe, maybe I just need to be educated. I, I don't know. But, you know, I. It's weird to me. But I, I, I'm just wondering. Just wondering. Um, does that mean that like people like um, The Rock, <clears throat> and Alicia Keys, Rashida Jones, uh, Kamala Harris, they're not really African American. Because they're only a percentage of it. I'm just curious. I'm just curious. If, if, if that only works, like if you can only consider yourself to be African-American or black, if you have, you know, whatever percentage, uh, you know, then why doesn't it work for Asian or Hispanic or whatever? Right. I, I, I don't know. I Somebody in, enlighten me in the comments down below. Help me out, because maybe I'm just missing something. I... And that's the point I was trying to make, that the one thing I don't have that every other racial group does have is a community. Yeah. You just tell me I look white, but then when I try to go to these places, they're like, you're not white. Yeah. Yeah, you made that point. Yeah. <laughs> All right, man. I yeah, appreciate I it, dude. I, I, I don't know. I, I just don't. Uh, you know, you know, I, I understand. I understand. Everybody got their struggles, you know. But, uh, you know All right. So, I'm uh, sorry for raising my voice, man. And I'm sorry for being a maniac. No, no. <laughs> no. Nah, nah. Hey, hey, hey. Come on. <laughs> I, I know he said no holds barred, but you guys took it to, a, to another <laughs> level. <laughs> yeah. 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 I love you guys. Uh -huh. Now we're going to sing. Uh, now we're going to They're hugging each other. Thing. Is it still rolling? Yeah. We're still rolling. Here's the thing. Now, uh. I know I was a dick and that wasn't right and that's probably the fucking asshole clip that people fucking put on the damn as the gift. But uh uh yeah, I'm uh and now if I accidentally shoot somebody in a movie set, he's gonna bring up the <laughs> like, he see, had, didn't he you has see anger him on issues. my show? He has rage he issues. He definitely killed that motherfucker. <laughs> They'll show me yelling. They'll show yeah. me yelling and be like, damn, look at him, he's yelling, he's yeah. lost it, man. No, but here, here's the thing, honestly, uh you know, uh, when I was young, I used to go crazy. I had, you know, mental problems, all this stuff. So, uh, and I had temper issues. And there's a lot of reasons why a lot of the blackballing happened in, early in my career. I self-sabotaged. He said, but it was, it was mental, you know. So uh, I have, uh, you know, they said, I, I used to destroy studios and break mm. the speakers. And I used to fucking go Didn't crazy. you take a shit on uh, on an executive's oh office? That's, that's well, that sounds kind of cool, though. Yeah. And when they were trying to screw you in a contract? That's what people say. <laughs> but, but, uh, uh, no, no. So, so uh, I used to destroy. So finally, they said, "Listen, you got to go to a therapist because you're insane and you're, mm. you're, you're uh, you know, not productive." So uh, I said, "I'm not going to a fucking therapist." And my father was like, "Get some hookers, a therapist." You know. So, so the label, uh, the label said, "We'll pay for it. Talk to this little lady." And so, so I started going to that. And then she said I had like a, a explosive, uh, uh, some kind of disorder, where it's uh, you get um, explosive disorder. It's what the fuck? Intermittent explosive disorder or some shit like that. So so what happens is you uh, lose, you get you get go cra extra, cra and then afterwards you feel real bad mm -hmm. and sad about it, and you feel you know you fucked up, and you're kind of like fuck, you know, like you're supposed to keep your cool. So. I want to apologize about my outburst because uh, that was a little crazy. And I outbursted too, man. Yeah, yeah. Now you have to sing the peace, love, and harmony song together <laughs> in a collaboration. <laughs> All right, man. See, so, okay. So what I want to talk about is we got, all right, so. That was a good interview, and that we we learned a lot from that interview, and I and I want to get into that. Right, first of all, we learned that Tim gets can get really heated really quick, and Ra the rugged man has rage issues that he's been working on for a long time, and then maybe that's what um, sabotaged his career, and maybe that's why I've never heard of him um, because he could never get big in the hip hop scene early on in you know the late nineties and early two thousands when he started because. He had these kind of issues and it ruined his career.
or blackballing from getting you know mainstream media play and whatever. So that could be it. that could be it, right? Um, I, I'm not necessarily 100% sure um, if that's the what, only the reason why, but you we obviously got to see uh, a little taste of maybe what was 10 times, 100 times worse in his younger years, right? I mean, we got to think, well, this is 2021. If we saw that in just a, a CRT argument, well, what could it have been 20 years ago, right? When he was way younger and less, you know, in touch with what's going on with him, right? So I got to give my hats off to Tim and the cast for keeping their cool when he blew up off the handle. Um, nobody got upset. Nobody, you know, tried to jump up and get in the way. They, they showed that, um, they really didn't think he was going to do anything physical or, or get out of hand that he was just upset and they all knew it and realized it. Nobody got out of their chair and, and rushed over there to, you know, keep him away from Tim and all that. And <clears throat> he felt bad right afterwards. Like you could see he was just passionate about his argument and he, he felt bad genuinely and was apologizing at the end of the episode. It didn't even, it's not like he even waited until which, I mean, he did apologize on Twitter, but it wasn't like he waited until after the show and he got home and then he thought about it and then, and then apologized. No, he realized in the moment, right. That he lost his cool and, um, you know, made an ass of himself. Now, what we did learn in this episode was that <clears throat> you can see how critical race theory can warp somebody's mind, right? Into believing some things that just aren't true, right? And and I will push back a little bit on Tim when he when he says he well, about where he agrees with um, systemic racism, right? Now we're talking things that happen forty, he, you know, Tim goes on so a lot of people have addressed this podcast including tim and one of the things that he talks about um when he addressed this podcast was um that him and are a believe you know align on where they believe that systemic racism is a problem in this country now i kind of disagree right now of course this is where it gets crazy like oh my god of course you disagree. You're white. You've had white privilege your whole life and blah, blah, blah. Right. And maybe I have, maybe I haven't. Um, I've had to work hard for everything I've got and I work hard every day to keep everything I've got. And I work even harder to build something on top of what I have. Right. So there are no days off for me. There are no, um, going to bed early nights. There are no hanging out with the friends and partying and doing whatever I'm working. 24 seven, but when I'm not sleeping, I'm taking care of my kids, I'm taking care of my wife. I'm doing this and I'm going working a full-time job, right? That's because I'm trying to build my American dream, not sit on my ass and hope the government will give me a bunch of fucking handouts like a lot of people in this country do. So when we start talking about critical race theory, or I'm sorry, when we start talking about systemic racism, right? Being what's holding certain communities down. I beg to differ and push back and say that it's not systemic racism that's holding communities down. Because if it was racism, why are we only choosing to be racist against black people? The Latino community has flourished in the last 40 years in this country. Outpacing white people and black people when it comes to population growth. Now, if this country was racist, how did that happen? Hell, the Asian population has grown more than the African community, African American community has over the last 20 years. Why is that? Is that so you mean to tell me that this country is racist, but it's only racist against black people? Everybody else gets a free pass, right? But we we just don't like those black people, so we're going to keep keep holding them down. See, that's what you guys say. That's what you're saying when you say system systemic racism is keeping the black community down. Because you're saying that this country is only racist against black people and not Latinos 
or Hispanics or I mean, no, but that you're saying that this country is only racist against black people and not Latinos or Asians or any other group, right? Just black people. And that sounds a little absurd to me. So what I see is that you want to point the finger at something else so that you don't have to look at yourself and point the finger at your culture and the way you as a community and as a people teach and raise your next generations. That's how you flourish in this country. If you look at the Latino community, heavy in the church, you know, there's, let me look at the Latino community, right? They, like I said before, have flourished in this country over the last 40 years. So it's hard to say systemic racism when you have other races flourishing in this country outside of white. It, then you ha That's why I, it makes me look to culture and not the system. I, I won't, I'm not saying the system isn't broken or that it isn't too big and needs to be dwindled down and let the people take their lot, take control of this country again. But it's not holding anybody down. Not any one race. It, the system's not holding anyone. The system isn't holding any one race down. At least I don't see that. Now, I, I've had these conversations with many people of, mul of m multiple races um, and have had very good conversations where I've been able to sway them more my way. Maybe not convince them all the way, but give them something to think about. Give them a viewpoint they may not have thought about or seen before, right? Because I have a unique set of experiences that not a lot of people have, right? Whenever I was growing up, my all of my younger years from the ages of one to 10 years old, I lived on military bases. Of those 10 years, six of them were in a foreign country, right? And so when you live in a foreign country on a military base, inside the walls of that military base is like your own little American city. Everything outside of it is another country. So you're like, you stay within the confines of that wall a lot more than you venture out. You venture out and you know, you go explore, but you don't, it's not every day you stay within the confines of your your little city but within that city you are the united states military asian hispanic black white you know they're all living together i had friends of every nationality and thought nothing of it nothing of it i really didn't even understand the concept of being mean to somebody because of their race whenever I was a kid just didn't, I, did, I never even thought about it. It would just never cross my mind. I never even really saw examples of it until I moved back to the United States when I was 10 years old in 1989. Right. And then, then I got to see it. And then, you know, I learned more about it and realized, you know, that there were, places in the United States that were segregated by race and still, and they were, you know, even the town that I had moved to, um, was predominantly white. I mean, I, so it was, um, it was a culture shock to me in the reverse because I was so used to being around other nationalities that not being around them anymore kind of was like, what's going on here. Right. And then, so that gave me a unique perspective on the different cultures. And I learned about different cultures whenever I was a small kid. I learned about the, you know, Asian cultures, Korean culture, and Japanese culture, um, because my dad had friends who had wives who were Japanese and Korean. 
Um, and so we've got to learn about those different traditions and, and stuff that they have in their culture. I learned about, you know, um, the difference between Latino mass and, you know, a Rome, like, and, and just regular Catholic, like Catholic mass. Right. I guess, um, there, there are some differences between a Latino Catholic mass and like, say, uh, an Italian Roman Catholic mass. Right. So, um, but I got to learn all of these things at a young age and was, and so I just thought that was normal. So I have a unique perspective on it. And not only that, but I grew up poor. My dad got out of the military. We went from being, you know, lower middle class to being poor. My mom and dad both had to work. We're never home. Um, I had to basically raise my little brother from the age of, uh, eight until, you know, we were teenagers. Um, cause my parents were always working and never home. And it just was the way it was. Right. I mean, I just thought that was normal. We were latchkey kids, right? We left for school. Nobody was at the house. We came home. Nobody was at the house. We just, you know, we had to take care of ourselves, but in that upbringing, I learned like a lot of different things and I went from being poor to even worse. I went from being in the military to being on the streets, right? Being basically homeless for a year, not having uh, a residence and having to sneak into people's houses to sleep on, you know, to uh, be able to sleep in a bed or um, hang out in the backseat of a car for an hour and wait on, my girlfriend at the time to come, you know, so we could go do something or, or sneak out of her room and run to the park and hang out at the park for 45 minutes while she, you know, was doing whatever at her house because her parents didn't like me and I wasn't allowed around over there, but I didn't have a place to stay either. Um, and I didn't have any money or a job or, or any of that stuff. So yeah, there, there were times where I had it you know, rough. And I was lucky to have people that, um, were there, you know, to help me out. But I want to get back to RA, the rugged man, um, because what he got, what he exposed in this was he's a racist. He is a white guy who fights for the black struggle and anybody outside of black people don't their their struggles don't matter because it doesn't compare to to black people. And see, I have a problem with that because I go back to community and culture. If you want to fix your community, you got to do it from within. And if you keep constantly pointing the finger and blaming somebody else, you're never going to fix the problem. You're just going to continuously Continue the cycle so that you can constantly be a victim. See, earlier in the show, right here. See, he calls Tim a victim. What he got wrong was that Tim isn't a victim. He has been victimized. R.A., the rugged man, plays the victim. Because although he is white, because he's fighting in the struggle for the black man, he gets to basically ride on the coattails of all of those struggles that they've had to go through over the last 75 years, you know, blah, 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 blah. Bro, are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Some of, some of the racist things I've ever seen on Tim's show came out of this guy's mouth. It's pretty crazy. But at the end of the day, what this shows us is that the wokeism and that, that far left ideology can warp and twist your mind into seeing nothing but race. And pushing aside everybody else's struggles because you don't think they match up to the struggles of the black man in this community, in this country, even though I would say those struggles are more self-inflicted 
than government or racially inflicted. But that's just my opinion. If you've got a different one, leave a comment down below. Let me know. I love to engage with my viewers, so feel free to fire away. If you've made it all the way to the end of the video, I appreciate you guys watching and everything you guys are doing for me. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button and notification bell so you get notified anytime I drop a new video. Smash that like button. Help this video get traction and, and uh, make YouTube share it. And I will catch y'all later. Peace.